Um, so I'm, I'm Fraja Siddiqui, I'm the strategic agency manager working with, with Max Connect now. Like Greg mentioned, over several months, it's been an, an amazing time I've had with, with Max Connect. You all, if you are working with Max Connect, you have a great, great team. Um, what I love about Max Connect is they're aligned with us when it comes to making sure that they're doing the best thing for, for all of you and, and for, your cus for, for all of you and for their customers. Um, they'll challenge us and we'll challenge them. But in the end, our goals are always similar, whereas how can we drive more growth, more revenue, more business for all of you in the room? Um, so today I'm gonna talk about a few things. Um, you can say modern marketing. Four things that I'll focus on uh, is to today's consumer. How has you know, COVID really shifted today's consumer and, and how they're surfing the net, how they're looking at buying the purchase journeys and whatnot. And then we'll go into what you can do about that with your Max Connect team specifically. So today's consumer. 30 years ago, which seems like a lot, but I would say most of us were born here. I was born, I was only three years old, but I was still born. Only 1% of uh, the population had access to internet. So internet was, you know, what was internet? No one really knew. We were having a chat yesterday with, with Jeff and Todd around you know, when he was on his BlackBerry about 15 years ago, it was like a, such a novel idea of having email on your phone. And today, four and a half plus billion people are online. Um, that's more than 55% of the world's population. I've seen it firsthand. I'm from Pakistan originally, and when I visit people that, you know, they, it's, they're not always have everything, but they still have their phone and they have access to internet, which uh, uh, makes, a, makes a huge difference. Um, that means it's also more complex to do tasks. Uh, based on some surveys we've done, it takes around eight searches to complete, complete a task. And that's even more complicated when it comes to uh, purchasing and buying, um, making you know, those, those decisions. This is just any task, really. So you know, the, the purchase journey continues to be uh, more complex. Uh, especially after COVID, I think it's, it's, it's become more and more difficult during COVID. And even now, we're still seeing, you know, increase in searches that are, are near me. People are still figuring that out. Uh, during COVID, we saw a ton of that, making sure, hey, can I, what are some of the rules? What are, what's going on? How can I uh, make sure that I'm following some of those rules? Um, so that's, that, those habits have sort of continued um, into, into now. I think we're getting better. With that, consumers also want personalization. Um, that was the case before the pandemic, but it's, it's gotten even more and more every day. Um, some stats here, 51% of consumers now expect personalized interactions. Um, that makes, that is important factor for them to make their purchase decision. Even though they want um, personalization, they are also very focused on making sure that their privacy is intact. And that's very important. 90% um, of adults believe companies should only have access to their data if they have given them permission. It's important. Um, it's important for all of us because that is how, what the consumer, consumer wants. So with all of those complexities, what can you do about it? So we have what well, we're looking at, the, the three C's of, of growth with, with Google. First is be customer centric. Um, you know, focus on where your customer is. You may have your um, hypotheses of where your customer might be, but that may not be the case. Um, so you know, don't think, don't, don't try to keep your own opinions of way of getting to the to the next sale. Um, be cutting edge. We're always working on new products, and there's probably some of you that don't love the new products. There's always always a love and relationship, but in the end, our goal really is to drive better performance for our for our, for our clients, but also make sure that the, the user journey continues to be best for our um, users that are you know, on Google. That's a core tenant of ours. And then be competitive. This is really where you all have the ability to make sure that your competitive edge is shown through, and that's through first party data integration, especially as you know, privacy and, and, and tracking and all that sort of becomes more complex, uh, especially as, as cookies get deprecated. So, Again, to what does it mean to be customer centric? Um, so we have, what well, we have, you know, search ads is probably the most, it's one of the things that you all are probably on. 
machine learning, AI, whatever you want to call it, is, continues to be a big part of our products. It continues to drive a lot of value for our users, which means it drives value for all of you because all of your customers are our users. We've seen it help a lot of advertisers as well. Um, within the trends page, within Google Ads, you can sort of see what's going on. Uh, and that's a, a lot of it housed through, through machine learning and automation. The three things we I have here, I know you guys have seen this before, uh, may not have the best, ex best experiences as well with some of these. I would say this has gone a lot better um, as we have continued to put in a lot of uh, our resources into making sure all of these three work in, in favor of driving more volume and more uh, performance for all of you. So it's smart bidding, broad match, and, and RSA responsive search ads. Um, smart bidding is probably my favorite. I think when I, so I've been in this industry for over 10, 10 years. Most of you have, some of you have been there longer than I have, but I think when I initially looked at smart bidding, it was, it was, it just wasn't that smart, to be honest with you. Um, it's gotten a lot better. And how it's gotten a lot better is, is it, it adjusts to the dy dynamic market. When we talk about being customer centric, it, we need to be able to allow the machine to figure out, okay, where is our customer? How do we make those changes in real time? How are we looking at all the signals available to us to be able to make those changes in real time? And that's really what smart bidding is all about. Um, a lot of that, a lot of you are, are, are utilizing it. I know the Max Connect team is, is also uh, working very uh, diligently, but also you know, making sure that it's working for all of you in the right way. It's not a do it and just leave it. It's, it's understanding what it's doing and, and how can you make it better. So we are, you, as you can imagine, you know, we have a lot, of, a lot of signals to tap into. There's location, there's you know, time, device, interest, all of those things are sort of taking me, are taken into account when we're looking at smart bidding. And that's how it, it sort of makes sure that, A, we're hitting, hitting your goals. And then we have what we uh, obviously call broad match. I think if you've been in this industry for a while, you're like, what the heck is, like broad match? No, 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 broad match, no. We have exact match, we have cascading negatives, all of that. I think that's sort of moved away from that now where with the ability of automation and, and machine learning, what you can really do with broad matches is expand and increase your efficiency, save time and, and be relevant. Because I would say in the last year or two, broad match has actually become a lot, a lot better. It's not just serving for anything or, or, or just you know, super broad, but it, combining that with smart bidding, you're actually able to reach more people that you thought you weren't able to reach because of your preconceptions on, hey, these are the type of keywords that only convert. Um, so that's where it's, it's gotten a, lo a lot better. It's not the broad match you, know, you may have, uh, uh, you remember or you have, may have used. It's gotten a lot better. It understands um, you know, the qualified user versus just any user. Uh, that is key though to be able to utilize with smart bidding because I think that those, if you do, if you've done one or the other, what happens is you're not getting the most out of it. So if I would say if you were looking at testing, like I would, with your Max Connect team, I would be very hip, want to test it in, in, in this sort of way to be able to see if it works for you. And you know, there's, there might be some cases where it just does not do what it was, it, it, does, it does not do exactly what you were doing before, and then that's, that's, that's a good way to know, okay, well, it, what, it didn't really uh, perform. But I would say for the most part, it'll expand and, and get you more, more reach. And then we have the last piece uh, on the, the automation side is, is responsive search ads. If you aren't aware of responsive search ads, they're basically, uh, the goal is to provide all the inputs. So you're giving the machine the opportunity to look at every, available input on headlines and descriptions, and then it'll create the right ad for the right user. And that's, you know, this is gonna, I would say, become more and more important as AI continues to be more uh, individualistic in that situation. So the right ad for the right person at the right time, at the right bid, becomes super, super important. And when you combine those three, what we're really seeing is 20% uh, more conversions at a similar cost per action. So. Overall, it's been, it's been pretty great. This is a good example of, hey, having the right signals with smart bidding, with uh, broad match, and then having the, your RSAs in place, ideal, ideal output.
The second piece we talked about when it came to being customer centric or what the consumers were dealing with today was, was privacy and measurement. Um, we all know this is changing. This continues to be an important topic across all, all industries. Um, you know, we're, we want to make sure that we're doing the best for our users, but we're also making sure that it's the best thing for, for all of us as well so that we can make better decisions for our users. Because if you go back, one of the things a lot of the customers, consumers wanted was personalization. So how do we get a good balance of that? That's really the key. Um, you know, this is a, a good way to look at like almost 50% of people worldwide stopped uh, buying or, or using a service due to privacy concerns. So how can you preserve that? Um, so, it, you know, ex you d preserving existing measurement using durable conversion tracking methods, like you know, using your first party data, having that available, um, the, uh, assigning values if you are unable to necessarily track the values to be able to drive the most out of it, um, and then strengthening your conversion setup with the privacy safe uh, future proof of measurement. So again, what you really wanna do is, is make sure that you are tapping into your first party data and I'll, making sure you are tracking properly, you have the, the right conversions, conversion tracking in place that is, that is privacy centric um, because that becomes super important. The second piece is, is being cutting edge. Like I said, our, we're always sort of focusing on um, the, the newest and the coolest. Uh, we actually ask for a lot of feedback from uh, agencies like Max Connect to get understanding of, hey, this is what's working, this is what's not working, their feedback, I personally provide to our teams of like, hey, this is what's going on. Um, and then that's how it, it, it gets better and better. The first, probably the, you've, it's not as new, but it continues to become better and better is, is Performance Max. Uh, it's really the, the goal of Performance Max, when it, it, it started was, hey, how can we, how can we focus on one thing? Um, and that sort of goes back to our, the Greg's presentation, like how can we focus on one thing and, and help you drive more of that one thing. So if you're a retail client, that's usually, uh, I wanna you know, get a certain ROAS across all of uh, Google search or you know, all of Google, for instance. Um, so how can we get you that? And that's really what Performance Max focuses was. It was like, hey, one thing we can hit, get for you across all the different, all the different, plat uh, all different um, products that we have you know, when it comes to Sorry, I was gonna, sh when it comes to YouTube, display, search, discover, Gmail, uh, and Maps. So really, if you combine that with you know, smart bidding, it, it makes sure that you are capturing your customer at the right place at the right time. And that was really the, the focus of it. What we've seen really is, um, so far, an average increase of 13% in, in total incremental conversions. Um, so it continues to provide value across I would say a plethora of our clients, not just e-com retail, but across the board. Um, it, I, like I mentioned, it's a single goal-based campaign. It's all focused on like, hey, I wanna hit this number, or like I, wanna, I want this uh, ROAS across, across the campaign, and it'll try to do that at its uh, best possible. Uh, it'll try to find where your customer is at that point to get you that, um, that target. The second we have, which is a little bit, I would say a little bit upper funnel, not upper funnel, but it would be a bit higher than performance max in terms of performance max is that low, like hey, I just want that ROAS. Demand gen is super new, it's still in beta. Um, we're working on it with, with uh, Phil and, and, and Greg and, and Brendan's team on um, getting this uh, available across if you're interested on it. Uh, so this is super new, it's in beta. Uh, you know, having a Max Connect team, you, you get the opportunity to uh, request these. Um, so this is basically a combining of, of YouTube and discovery ads. If you haven't used discovery, it's a, it's a Google feed. Um, if you have an Android, you can see it. It's, it's, a, it's a very good way to learn about new, to learn about new client, new brands, um, new things. So it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. And then obviously you've probably heard of YouTube Shorts that uh, continues to grow drastically. So this will sort of give you all of that inventory together but also focused on like what you're trying to accomplish. So that could be 
hey, I want to reach, uh, my focus is driving reach, or it could also be, you know, driving, driving conversion. So this is, we're very excited about this. It's very, very new. It's going to continue to be a focal point of ours because we believe this will drive a lot, a lot of value. Um, if you have, you know, if you're doing a lot on social, this is a great way to test out uh, what we have when it comes to social um, and, and sort of compare it, right? Especially if you, have that, if you have great lifestyle images, if you have great video assets, um, things like that, this can be uh, super, super, super helpful. What it's, its goal really is that it's, it's ex expanded impact, right? You're not looking at just one or two in silos, you're looking across the board. It encompasses what really Google is all about, which is like being at the right place at the right time for, uh, for your prospective uh, consumer. Um, also, you know, Google's all about data. We have a lot of uh, odd targeting audiences that sort of taken into account, and then we can really, really give the consumer the best option. What is, I think, important here and across all of our products is providing more and more inputs so that we can get the best output. So, like, if you have 15 different creatives, put them all in, let it figure out which, which creative makes the most sense for which kind of um, consumer, and then uh, having different type of measurement studies like the brand lift study, search lift, um, things like that can, can really showcase the overall, overall value. This is all the different signals that, you know, take in place to be able to look at the interest and intent to meet, meet those goals. Um, talk about the measurement piece, uh, so I'll move on. And the last one is, is competitive. Um, I think this is very important only because this is all about integrating your first party data. Um, your data is the most important to helping you decide who the next set of customers might be or how you're going to be able to drive the best out of it, um, especially when it comes to, to Google Ads specifically. Um, so, you know, make sure that you are working through the Max Connect team to be able to integrate that best possible within, within Google and, and creating the right audiences across, um, across our platform, especially, especially as third-party cookies continue to sort of um, go away and, and that's just going to get as more complicated. Um, so, you know, if you look at it, it's like automation plus first party data plus the, the human expertise, sort of what we've seen is, you know, 3%, oh, sorry, 3x revenue uplift and uh, 1.5x reduction in cost. I know that's a bit weird, but that's what it says. So what do you want to do when it comes to building that, that um, robust database is first build that first party database. Not everyone has that, so I would say that's like the first place to start, making sure that when you are getting all that data and when you are looking at your customers, you are able to house it in, in a way where um, uh, you can then share it out uh, pri privately, anonymously, um, create a customer-oriented strategy, target business goals through, through automation. So you want to make sure that you are using the right technology um, you know, uh, to be able to have that robust database. There's different uh, types of, of, of first party database, like CRMs you probably use. Most of them are compatible, but even then we, we are able to take like manual uh, uh, hash data in to be able to look at customer matches, things like that. Um, so I would say that's, that's the key there. Ensure that your strategy is, is built to cultivate customer trust. Um, so be very transparent about, hey, this is what we're collecting, how it will be used, and how it is used to, to benefit customers. I think one of the most important things is privacy or like a lot of people don't even know what that is and they're just automatically like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. But if we're explaining to them at the, at the forefront of like, hey, this is why we are using it or this is sort of what's collected, then that, that sort of helps us just move a little bit uh, over the hump of like, I don't want to give any data away. Um, and then optimize towards your, your business goals, right? So uh, give us all those inputs, work them through, through Max Connect and, and uh, your teams and uh, utilize it to, to drive the best results. So I've been pretty quick. I think I, I'm on time. Uh, three takeaways, in my opinion, that I think are, are important here is your consumers, your, your customers expect more. They expect more Whatever they expect right now, they expect more right now. So like they continue to expect more. 
every second, it's like as a consumer, you, you, they, they want more. Um, so you have to make sure that you're uh, uh, doing everything that they want to be able to uh, sort of close that, lean into technology. This is obviously, uh, you know, it's hard to relinquish control sometimes, uh, but I would say it's all about leaning in and testing it out and understanding, learn, and see how you can do differently, but this is not going away. I think AI, I try not to talk a lot, I, I don't put AI at all in my slides for a reason because I think I've heard AI for the last, like, six months, everything is it. Wow. That's a, it's probably a nice car. <laughs> I've heard uh, AI across, you know, six months, so, but that's gonna, that's not gonna, that's not gonna change. Uh, it's going to continue to be a part of our lives, our conversations, and our consumers sort of expect the, the, the best out of it. So lean into it, learn, try it out, see what makes sense, and then makes those decisions. And then what is your competitive advantage is that your data is the best data. Nothing, you know, a third party, like a, if you're used to using Google or other, other uh, uh, platforms, your data will always be the best. So utilize that as much as possible to give us the ability to uh, find the most qualified customers. I think it's gonna be uh, a key to uh, continued success. And that's all I got. Thank you.